I guess what what is like the state of autism awareness in places like the Ukraine? It's getting better, but I will say this: compared to say Western Europe, England, uh, and France, and in in those areas, um, it is behind, definitely behind, as far as autism and autism awareness. They are very, they're they're still behind. They're definitely. Um, it's not their fault. It's just been, they, they're still a modernizing, um, Western, you know, Eastern European country, but with, uh, modernizing with Western ideals. And that takes years, right? Because being a part of the Soviet sure. sphere of influence for so long, and then coming out of that and becoming a democracy, and then with all the internal politics that have been going on, and there has been, you know, you know, uh, different changes in, in government. And then, you know, they, um, of course, they had uh, a Rus- a Russian-backed president, you know, before 2014. And then mm-hmm. uh, he was ousted, and then they had a supportive Ukrainian president, uh, national, more of a national um uh, president, nationalist president that was pro-Ukrainian. The Russians didn't like it, so and then they wanted to take back Crimea, and they did, and then and on onward and onward. And so, autism has really been on uh, a back burner out of many back burners, but trying to modernize its Western thinking, and that thinking doesn't just come easily. It takes years. Mm-hmm. Um, same thing we're trying to do in Canada is modernize the thinking of uh, more peer autistic programs developed by autistics and nothing yeah. about us without us. And much like in the UK and in the United States, certainly, yes, um, they there's a lot of things that, that come into play, and that's part of all the social dynamics that have to come into this. Mm-hmm. And... So there's well, that. Well, what about um, what about like Russia? Like, do you know? Do you know that? Do you know about like the state of autism awareness in Russia? Uh, it's worse. Um, Russian in Russia, it's Russia's not in. Um, Russia has not been. Um, it's not an open society. Um, I talking to one Russian yeah. earlier on in the war, there's no mental health support. There's no, and worrying mm-hmm. about being different. And, and especially if you are, um, if you are gay, if you are LGBTQ, Putin does not like that. The government will go against that fully. And, uh, people are being arrested. People were being uh, hurt. Uh, some were being killed. Um, that all, that's a minority group that is, um, definitely oppressed in russia um doesn't matter what the people so I guess say like yeah it just yeah because so i guess like one of one of the things that you know because because we're talking about like the effects of the ukrainian war like it's not it's not i suppose it's not only like civilian ukrainians that are affected by this whole thing it's it's also the the russian ukrainians and i did yeah, the Russian Ukrainians, <laughs> um, the autistic Russians that are being affected as well. And I did recently did a sort of an anonymous interview on my Instagram, and um, I was talking to this this um, this lad from from Russia, and he 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 was saying exactly the same to what you're saying. He's saying that all well, like okay. the um, provisions, like the the medication, the you know, sort of the the general sort of um, attitude of like the government, as as well as the people towards people who are diverse, whether it's sexuality, whether it's um, mm-hmm. autism, whether it's, you know, whether it's neurodiversity. Um, I mean, yeah. it's too bad, eh? It's just, it's too bad. I mean, yeah. uh, you think that, you know, after the fall of the Soviet Union, that there's always this fear of trying to bring the uh, the Russians into a, um, 
into more of a modern uh, way of thinking and uh, a more Western way of thinking mm-hmm. and a democracy way of thinking. And, and uh, there's a lot of corruption that came in with that. And then there's a lot of, and there was corruption in the Soviet era as well. But also there was uh, certainly Russia um, with Vladimir Putin. You come into a man of the old way of thinking, the KGB, an old KGB style man way of, and a um, ex, um, exclusionist and uh, nationalist Russian way of thinking and um, you know thinking that the West is the enemy and you know that's the same um, expansionist and um, Soviet way of thinking if not czarist way of thinking you know um, czarist in some ways I'm, I'm not too too a- Upon well, what Putin. That means. One person has ultimate po- the ultimate power was Tsar Tsar Nicholas II, and okay. his family were in charge when the um, the before the Soviet um, era took over in 1917. There was the Bolshevik Revolution, and the uh, the Tsars were the, the Tsar uh, Tsar Nicholas II and his family were were taken out of power, and the Soviet era became. You know, at this uh, a socialist and, and communist rule, um, yeah, one bad government lead to another, in a sense, just another form. Well, um, I guess like so. Obviously, we've we've understood that you know thing things are not looking great for autistic people, and on on I want, I don't like to say both sides of the war because I don't, you know, I'm not like angry at the the russian people i'm angry at the people who are who are in power and i'm ang- angry at the people who are forcing people to to go to war and, and and obviously there are going to be some russian individuals who you know they believe they believe what what they're saying and they believe the the people who are who are doing all of these actions that are just absolutely horrific and you know not not putting humans in the in the the best conditions um i'm saying i'm i'm sort of dance, dancing around it the 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 topic because it's it's such a it's such a um a horrible things that thing that's happened and I, I feel sometimes a little bit um i don't know you you i think there's a concept that you have around like survivor's guilt and stuff and i feel like mm-hmm. every every day that i'm going that I'm going to work, that I'm worrying about very minor first world problem things like that, that I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not involved in, in the horrible things that are happening and and are happening at the moment. And it's, it's, it's sometimes quite, um, sometimes quite hard to speak about it because I, I don't feel sometimes and very, involved in it and i don't want to like speak for for people or i don't want to get anything wrong or like uh, i i just find that that the whole thing with war is that it's very messy isn't it like yes it's no, very very messy and that's you, the you that's from, the thing from both countries yeah. from different perspectives different political spectrums it's so hard sometimes just to get a clear picture of what's happening oh absolutely and that's uh, that is a serious uh, that's a serious thing when war is going on there's it's the fog of war and that's um, and Ukraine is doing very well I mean you look at Kharkiv uh, the, the Russians have been pushed out of Kharkiv the one has collapsed uh, the Kharkiv oblast in the east and uh, the Ukrainians are counter um, once have launched a major counteroffensive in Kyrgyzstan. And they're doing well, and uh, the Russians are doing terribly. They've lost. Well, the Ukrainians say they've lost over nearly fifty-three thousand troops. Um, the um, oh the Americans God. and the British will say it's it's slower than that. But again, the Russians will say, "Oh, it's it, it's all fake news." And <laughs> so, I mean, but the Russians are doing terribly, and the Ukrainians are taking back their ground, and it's just it's that's good, you know. Yeah, it is. So, it is. I think um, you know, it's 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 an, an amazing thing, and I'm I 
from the news that I saw in the UK or on social media or anything like that. It seemed like it was, you know, a matter of weeks before like the the whole the whole of Ukraine was was going to be taken over and it's and we're going to have to get all of the the NATO involved and like mm-hmm. it felt very 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 like it was going to be like a really quick thing and you know that was months ago and it 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 just seems to keep lingering by and you know all of all of the the press and all of the media that's in in the UK at the moment is is all about like the queen or like the celebrities and like it, it's it's really i understand i i i get it i i get what nobody wants to hear about war all the time and horrible things happening but it it just feels a little bit disillusioning sometimes to know that these things are happening right now and we're all focusing on our own first world problems and first world news and like you know what i'm saying 